hello everyone for today's video I'll be showing you how to test a three pole contactor for today's testing I'll be using my fluke 179 through RMS multimeter what is a contactor a contactor is an electrically controlled switch it's also referred to as an, a relay however it has higher current and voltage switching capabilities now the contactors are used for switching a power circuit on and off with a separate voltage supply. As you see here we have our coil A1, A2 which is used to control the switching on and off of our contactor. Now the design of the contactor enables it to be opened and closed repeatedly with minimal damage on the high current contacts. So on the top here we have our high current contacts L1, L2, L3 On the load side we have our T1, T2, T3 So these high current contacts can fail in an open position burnt or melted as a result of a contactor being undersized or a result of a shorted load creating a high current situation. So we have many different instances which can cause a contact to fail. As well as dust, dirt can prevent the, the complete operation of our contactor and many more factors. Now you can manually operate your contactor by the pressing here. By the pressing here with your finger you're simulating a close position of the contactor releasing it it's an open position of your contactor contact points now in testing a contactor and high homes near an infinity when the contactor is open so in its normal state when it's open if you should test across L1 to T1 or L2 to T2 L3 to T3 or across our normally open contact we should have a very a high resistance reading or an open line resistance reading on the contrary if we should press here with our fingers this is simulating a closed contact so if we should press here and go across L1 to T1 L2 to T2 L3 to T3 or across our normally open contact we should have a very low resistance reading normally around 0 0.3, 0 .0 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 ohms now again a one key aspect whenever testing your contactor ensure that the power is off everything is de-energized but since our contactor is completely isolated from any form of power source or power supply I mean we are safe in our, in our testing Another point to note, inside here we have a spring, we call a return spring. Now that is also a significant failure point of contacts. So if our spring fails, that will, present, that will prevent our coil from actually closing and opening our contactor, which prevent it operating as it's supposed to operate. But this can be checked during a, a visual inspection, so we'll have to remove the top cover of our contact to, do, to visually inspect our spring our contact points can also become corroded due to carbon buildup, arcing and the list goes on now let's get to testing our contactor now in order to test our contactor we'll switch on our multimeter to the ohm settings right ohms on our multimeter now as I said previously in the open state without this being manually depressed we should have a high ohm reading when we go across our line and load contact points or on some meters like the multimeter will give you an OL meaning there is an open line so let's test this is our first test to do on our three pole contactor so we go across L1, T1, got an OL on our multimeter, let's bring this closer, 
we go across L2 and T2 OL on our fluke we go across L3 and T3 contacts OL on our multimeter we have our normally open contact on the far right we go across those contact points we have OL on our multimeter so the high current high voltage contact points so far have been good so we'll continue to test it in the closed position as I said earlier to simulate a closed operating position of our contactor we physically depress here with our fingers and carry out another set of ohm readings or you can do a continue to check but I'll do the ohm reading now once more we're going across L1 T1 push it in we have 0 0.1 ohm so we have continuity across L1 to T1 L1 to T2 manually depress 0 0.2 ohms very good so far for L2 to T2 L3 to T3 0 0.1 ohm so we're good so far now for a final contact test we go across our normally open contact manual depress spring we have 0 0.2 0 0.3 ohms so our contactor is doing very good so far final step to to conclude our contactor testing is testing the coil a1 a2 section of our contactor now the coil acts as the, the switching uh, mechanism for a contactor so this coil is a 110 volts 50 hertz operated or it can be operated on a 110 to 120 volts 60 hertz uh, voltage cycle now the internal workings of a contactor when a voltage is applied across our coil A1 to A2 is electromagnetic in electromagnet inside which pulls our contact in closes the path for current flow bet between L1, L2, L2 to L3 and so forth all the way up to the normal open contact points now, Surprisingly, the, the coil failure is one of the most typical failure when it comes to a, a three-pole contactor. Or if it fails to engage, a coil is normally the culprit. Now, how do we test the coil of a contactor? Now, we can test it, you know, with a voltage across it as well as in the de-energized form. Since we just have our contactor isolated, We'll test it in the de-energized form. Now in the power off situation, we will check the ohm reading of our coil. So we'll have our multimeter leads across A1 and A2. And based on our ohm reading, we can tell if our contactor coil is good, if it's shorted, and so forth. Now an open circuit or very high resistance signifies an open coil. So if we should test across here and we have a very high resistance, say in the kilo ohms or, or mega ohms or even OL, then there is an open in our coil. Also, if we should test and we get a moderate or low resistance value, then it, that would indicate that the coil is capable of conducting electricity. That means that the coil is still intact and it should work as the manufacturer specifies it to work. So we'll continue to test, verify that our multimeter is in the ohm position, get some light on the screen, and we'll go across our contact points. So we go across A1, A2, and we have 
130 ohms. Now for a contactor like this, I've worked with a lot of them and I can testify that having that particular resistance is this this coil is perfect. That's how it comes out of the box. 130 ohm coil. So this contactor has passed our contactor test and it's good to be installed in whatever circuit you need. Now another point to note when using a contact it's always good to, to check your joint specifications or if it's a replacement part check the, the check the specification on the contactor that is being replaced so that you know the coil voltage levels match up as well as the high current parts ensure that the voltage specifications are are intact you can see this contactor can switch a three phase or single phase with different voltage levels for the three phase ranging from 200 to 600 volts and for the single phase 120 to 40 volts also remember when testing a contactor it's good to have it completely isolated so not to introduce any additional resistances and that's it that's how i check my contactor please like share comment leave a comment tell me what you think about this video any tips that you might have to my testing procedure and any videos that you would like me to do leave it in the comment section and i really appreciate your time thank you